This is All India Radio, the news read by Naresh Margo. In a major move to expand international air travel out of India, the Civil Aviation Ministry has approved new traffic rights to domestic carriers for the next three seasons. The rights will apply for the current winter and next year's summer and winter seasons. The new cities include Rome, Madrid, Barcelona, Sydney, Melbourne, Nairobi, Al Najaf in Iraq, Moscow, Zurich, Macau, Tashkent, and Ho Chi Minh City. Civil Aviation Minister Rajit Singh is also directed holding of fresh bilateral negotiations to enhance air traffic rights with countries like those in the Gulf and Southeast Asia with whom the existing rights have almost got exhausted. These countries include Singapore, Thailand, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Iraq, Macau and Afghanistan. In a bid to socially and politically empower women, the Assam State Election Commission has announced 50% reservation of seats in the panchayat election for women. This decision will come into effect from the forthcoming panchayat election, which is likely to be held in February to March next year. State Election Commissioner Biren Datta said that necessary instructions have been sent to all the deputy commissioners in this regard. The scheduled caste SC and scheduled tribe ST women would also enjoy 50% seat reservation for women in the panchayats. The governments of Delhi, Punjab and Haryana will be meeting the officials of the Environment Pollution Control Authority today to take stock of the smog situation in the national capital. There was a thick haze over the city's skyline for almost a week before it finally cleared out yesterday. Today's meeting to be attended by secretaries of Delhi, Haryana and Punjab, as well as scientists and environmentalists, is expected to focus on the causes and the solutions to the thick smog cover that has engulfed the city, indicating a sharp drop in the air quality. In the Kashmir Valley, an army officer belonging to the elite counterinsurgency unit was charred to death when a fire broke out in his camp in Bandipura district. Official sources said today the lieutenant colonel died after fire engulfed four huts inside the camp in Bandipura, 35 kilometers from Srinagar last night. The other army personnel stationed in the camp are safe. A short circuit apparently triggered the fire. The army authorities are probing the incident. The Indian High Commissioner in Colombo, Mr. Ashok Kant, has asked for consular access to all Indian prisoners lodged in the Velikara jail in Colombo after yesterday's prison riot. Sri Lankan authorities have confirmed that all 33 Indian prisoners, which include some fishermen, are safe. The prison officials have said the access can be provided only after the search operation of the army is complete later today. Speaking to All India Radio, Mr. Kant said that India is monitoring the situation and has been assured of the safety of Indian prisoners. Meanwhile, the death toll in the last night's prison riots has risen to 27. Nepal has been elected as a board member of the United Nations Economic and Social Council ECOSOC for a three-year term starting from January next year. According to the UN Department of Public Information, Nepal, along with 17 other countries, was elected as board members on Thursday. Officials at the Foreign Ministry in Kathmandu said Nepal was elected with 131 votes out of the total 194 in the UN General Assembly. Spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Arjun Thapa, said this will help Nepal play an important role in social and economic matters and lift the diplomatic stature in international arena. President Obama says rich Americans will have to pay more taxes as part of any political deal to avert a looming budget crisis. Setting the terms for talks with the congressional leaders, Mr. Obama said he was open to cooperation and compromise with the Republicans, but he said he will not accept any plan to reduce the budget deficit that did not balance spending cuts with higher taxes for top earners. One of the best-known symbols of New York, the Statue of Liberty, has been illuminated for the first time since the superstorm Sandy struck nearly two weeks ago. The statue stands on a small island in New York Harbor. It has been closed to the public since the island was damaged in the storm. And that is the end of this news bulletin.